Hey guys, welcome back to another session of Virtual Awana at Northwoods Church. Today we're going to talk about my friend and your pastor, Bobby Pell. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to do a short quiz to see how well you know Pastor Bobby. Okay, so what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and we're going to see if you can uh, do well on this quiz about how well you know Pastor Bobby. If you need to pause the recording, go ahead and do that, but go ahead and get something to write with. All right, well, if you've started uh, back the video, then we're ready to do this Pastor Bobby quiz. So here is your first question. Where was Pastor Bobby born? So question number one is where was Pastor Bobby born? Question number two, what is Pastor Bobby's wife's name? What is Pastor Bobby's wife's name? Question number three, what are the names of Bobby's two kids? What are the names of Bobby's two kids? Question number four, where do Bobby's two kids live? And I'll give you a hint, they live in different places. Where do Bobby's two kids live? And if you want a bonus question for that, where does Bobby's oldest son work? That's a bonus. Next question, number five. What is Pastor Bobby's favorite type of movie? What is Pastor Bobby's favorite type of movie? And last question, this is yes, no. So this is, you got 50-50 on this one. Does Pastor Bobby like cat t-shirts? Does Pastor Bobby like cat t-shirts? All right, hope you've written down something for all those questions. Let's go over the answers to, and whether you know Pastor Bobby really well. So question number one, where was Bobby born? Well, the answer is Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee, hopefully you got that right. Second question, what is the name of Pastor Bobby's wife? Pastor Bobby's wife is named Amy, and her last name is Pell, Amy Pell. Imagine that. Third question, what are the names of Bobby's kids? So Bobby's kids, the oldest is named Garrett, and the youngest is named Ryan. Next question, question number four. Where do Pastor Bobby's two kids live? Well, Garrett, he lives in Cody, Wyoming, and uh, Ryan lives in Des Moines, Iowa. If you got the states right, we'll give you points for that. For that question, we had a bonus question. Where does Garrett work? Well, Garrett works at the Shoshone National Forest up near Cody, Wyoming. He's a forester. Hopefully you got that one right. Next question, number five, this one should be an easy one if you really know Pastor Bobby. What is Pastor Bobby's favorite type of movie? Well, of course, it's Hallmark Christmas movies. And no, I am not kidding. Pastor Bobby loves Hallmark Christmas movies. And the final question, does Pastor Bobby like cat t-shirts? Well, the answer is, of course he likes cat t-shirts. In fact, you probably should get him one for Christmas. He would love to have another cat t-shirt in his wardrobe. The secret is, is when he's not here, he wears cat t-shirts all the time. So these are some things that you know about Pastor Bobby. Well, I'm gonna put down this big head for a second and I'll be back to continue the lesson. All right, we're back without Pastor Bobby's big head in front of us. So if you did well on that quiz, how well do you really know Pastor Bobby? Well, if you did well on that quiz, then maybe you know some basic facts about your pastor. But if you knew those facts, do you really know Bobby well? Well, the answer really is no. So how can you get to know somebody and get to know them intimately and get to know them well? For example, if you wanted to know Bobby well, how would you get to know him? Well, the answer to that question is 
you spend time with him. Maybe you go out to lunch with him or grab some coffee with him or walk the dog with him or walk around the block with him. And those that actually live with Bobby probably know him the best, like his wife knows him pretty well. Why? Because she lives with him and gets to spend a lot of time with him. And so his wife probably knows him the best of anybody here on planet Earth, except maybe his mama and his daddy. So to get to know somebody well, we have to spend time with them. And if we're not spending time with them, then we really don't know them well. So the same goes for God. How do we really know who God is? Well, we need to spend a lot of time with him. And remember what we said about the Bible? The Bible is truth about God. It is truth from God about who he is. He reveals himself to us through this book. How much would you know about God if you didn't spend time in the Bible? You probably wouldn't know much about God at all. You see, we can learn some basic stuff about God from going outside and looking at things that he has created. We can look at God's creation and see that he's very creative. God made platypuses and God made caterpillars and God made spiders and snakes. And so God must be creative. We know that God cares for us because he gave us food to eat and water to drink. And he gave us shelter over our heads. So there's some very basic things that we can learn about God from creation. But we can't really know a ton about God unless he reveals himself to us. And that's why the Bible is important, because God has revealed himself to us and shares with us about who he is. Our Bible verse this week is John 20, verse 31, which says this, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Let's say that one more time. John 20, 31. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Now that's a verse from a previous vacation Bible school that we've done. So if you've done vacation Bible school here at Northwoods, you should know that verse. So let's break that down and talk about three things that we're going to learn today from this passage. First is there's a difference between knowing about God and knowing God. We get to know God through his word, the Bible. And so there's a big difference between, for example, knowing lots of facts and figures about Bobby and actually knowing Bobby. We get to know Bobby by spending time with him. And the same thing is true with God. The more that we are in God's word, the more that we read the Bible, the more we get to know God intimately. He has revealed himself to us. And so how well would you know God if you don't read the Bible? Not very well at all. So that's a great reason to get to know the one who loves us so. Second thing we learned today is that the Bible was written to help us know God and to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Knowing how to have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ, is the most important thing God wants us to learn from the Bible. And so it says later on in scripture that God has given us everything that we need for life and for godliness. And so the Bible may not necessarily teach us how to bake a cake or how to eat an oatmeal raisin pie properly. The Bible doesn't teach us how to mix chemicals together in a proper fashion. But you know what the Bible does do? It teaches us about who God is it teaches us about who Jesus is and then how we can have salvation and then how to live a godly life. And that's everything that we need to have a life of godliness. So everything that's truly important to us is found in this book and God has revealed it. And the third thing, the more we read and study God's word, the better we will know God and what he wants for us. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. 
So in that verse, there's two positive words that's used to describe what God does through his word. He teaches us and he trains us. And so he's telling us what we should do in life, how to live our life, that we should love one another, that we should encourage one another, that we should pray for one another. The Bible teaches us lots of positive things that we should do. But then there's two other words in 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, the Bible is useful for reproof and for correction. And those two words describe that the Bible tells us things that we should not do. That we shouldn't be mean to our brother and sister. That we shouldn't tell a lie. That we shouldn't steal things. The Bible tells us about what sin is and that we should not do those things. So the Bible is extremely useful. So the more that we read the Bible, we know the more we get to know God, but we also learn about how we should live our life and how we should not live our life. So what's the important lesson for today? Read your Bible. Without reading the Bible, you cannot truly get to know intimately who God is. So it should be a joy and a privilege to read this book because the more we read it, the more that we get to know our Savior who loved us and rescued us. We'll see you next time, guys. Hi, this is Pastor Bobby. And Pastor Bobby wants to remind you of your challenge for Awana for the week. If you are in Sparks, Remember that you should be doing two sections in your book per week. If you are in TNT, you should be doing one section in your book per week. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for doing your Awana challenge every single week and talk to a volunteer and let them know that you've done your verses for the week. Bye-bye, guys. I'm gonna go put on a cat t-shirt and play some golf. Bye. All right, guys, here's our last bonus challenge of the semester, and you've really got two weeks to do this. You know that one lost friend that you've been praying for? Well, what we'd like for you to do over the course of the next two weeks is just take an opportunity to share what you know about Jesus with that person. Doesn't need to be complex. You may just want to uh, share with them some things that you've been learning in Awana, share with them your Awana book. That would be great, but we don't want you to just invite them to church. I mean, inviting them to church would be awesome and all that, but we really want you to share something that God has been teaching you. So that can be an Awana lesson, it can be a Sunday school lesson, it can be something you've been learning in the Bible all by yourself, uh, it could be something you've been doing in a devotional at home with your family. Whatever God has been teaching you, share about that with somebody who is lost and doesn't know about Jesus. Hope you take up that challenge and you've got two weeks to complete it. We'll see you next time.